Hello classmates, my name is Michael Monahan, and today I'll be explaining to you uh, some problems I see with global warming around my community. So, global warming is directly affected by the availability of fresh drinkable groundwater. If one doesn't have fresh drinking water, it must be brought in from somewhere else at the cost of an additional carbon footprint. On Long Island, I worked in three separate non-construction or environmental jobs that were near or at three different Superfund sites directly related to groundwater contamination with the chemical tetrachloroethene, a common dry cleaning agent. First, at my first job in a warehouse, I was about a two minute drive away from a old dry cleaning facility near a abandoned dump. At my second job, uh, also in Melville, a sales job in the very office building I worked in, unbeknownst to me, was actually a super fun site. Uh, so I made my coffee with that water. I washed my hands with that water, all unbeknownst to me. And then lastly, I, I my current job is actually right near the Grumman Plume in, in Bethpage, which is known for intense groundwater contamination, not only with tetrachloroethene, but a lot of other uh, chemicals as well. So... This leads me to, to two problems and two solutions, which I'm going to explain later on in the video. The first problem is groundwater contamination radically increases one's risk for cancer and other life-altering diseases if not properly controlled for. This is especially vulnerable in the early formental stages of life and in the, the late stages of life. So in from when you're newborn to about 17 years old, and then from when you're about 75 or, or 70 uh, to, to your passing, uh, that's when you're most vulnerable uh, for these diseases. But, of course, they could happen at any time. Uh, and second is the problem how unenvironmentally friendly uh, dry cleaning is. Uh, this incredibly dangerous chemical, tetrachloroethylene, is still incredibly commonplace to dry cleaners compared to other bad pollutant industries, such as refrigeration that had bad chemicals in the past, uh, such as Freon, uh, but now you see for chemicals such as R142 uh, in, in its place to do its job. Although it doesn't do the exact same job as Freon, it gets pretty close, uh, coming in at around 92% efficiency. Uh, this all comes to a head uh, in Patrick Hayden's The Environment and Social Justice. Uh, one line that I thought was particularly interesting uh, was many environmental problems stem from poverty, often contributing to a downward spiral in which poverty exacerbates po environmental degradation and environmental degradation exacerbates poverty. Uh, what Mr. Hayden, I believe, was, was alluding to there was the fact that it creates a negative feedback loop, uh, that decision A results in decision B, but decision B getting worse makes decision A even worse. Uh, so, although there's a slight correlation between the number of Superfund sites on Long Island and the wealth of the location, I think the real problem here is a lack of profitability. This is precisely why the Superfund program was made, because large corporations would leave the problem for someone else, if not forced by the government, to fund the cleanup. It's not profitable, because especially companies on Long Island who've either gone bankrupt or are in the late stages of, of their corporate lifetime, uh, such as North of Grumman, or that don't have a environmental or, not, not an environmental, but a economic incentive to clean it up, as the Grumman facility on Long Island is really just left to design work, not the actual assembly of aircraft or anything that Grumman builds. So this connects back to the country, but how does it connect back to the world? Um, it connects to the world by the one resource we build our entire lives around, water. Only 0.5% of all the water on Earth is liquid fresh drinking water. And the destruction of any of it is an international issue, uh, as we only have that much. And unless an incredible technological breakthrough comes in at some point in my lifetime, we're only going to get that much. Um, so I would like to propose now my two solutions to my two problems. First, dry cleaning as an industry has to move towards a new chemical uh, to do its cleaning that's safer than tetrachloroethylene uh, with the help of governmental regulation that does at least 
a somewhat as good job. Um, a successful roadmap of this would be the refrigeration industry's phase out uh, through legislation of Freon. Second, Long Island's groundwater system could be fixed, at least on the human consumption side and not so much on the environmental impact side, uh, by merging with the New York City water grid. Although this would seem hard, it's easier than one would think because the New York City water, uh, which comes from upstate New York and the Adirondacks, is already making it onto Long Island because, uh, as many Long Islanders would not tell you, uh, Queens is on Long Island geographically. So routing water from Queens to Nassau and Suffolk, although it would be a large infrastructure project, it's not the largest hurdle in the world. So with that, I'd like to thank you for your time, and I hope you have a great day.